Hi all, today we are going to discuss about the theory of the tank circuit. So before going to the theory of the tank circuit, let us see what is the need for the tank circuit. Why should we go for that one? So till now we have discussed that in the chopper, we have represented switch in this form. We have represented by a switch. Around that we have represented by the dots. So why we are representing by these dots? What does this block indicates? Actually, if you are taking a thyristor, so turning on the thyristor is easy. But if you want to turn off the thyristor, so how, what is the procedure to turn off? The thyristor can be turned off by reducing its anode current below the holding current. We have discussed while discussing the thyristors, characteristic of the thyristor. We have to decrease the current below the holding current. And after that, we have to apply a reverse voltage for some time so that it can regain its forward blocking characteristics. So after that only it can again block the forward voltage. I am repeating once again, in order to turn off the thyristor which is already conducting, first we have to bring its anode current below the holding current. After bringing it below the holding current, we have to apply some reverse voltage for some time so that it can regain its forward blocking characteristics. After that, we can apply the forward voltage again, it can block it. So this process is called as the commutation process. This process is called as the commutation process. Depending on how you are applying this or how you are performing this commutation, this commutation techniques can be classified into two categories. One is the forced commutation and the second one is the load commutation. So let us see one by one of them. The load commutation in this type of the commutation, the name itself is telling load. The load is having the characteristic to do the commutation. That means to decrease the current below that level and do the reverse biasing of the thyristor for some time. So how it is doing? In this type of commutation, the load current flows through the thyristor becomes zero due to the nature of the load circuit. It can be due to the nature of the load circuit. Or second one is a transfer to another device from the conducting thyristor. What we will do that entire current is bypassed through another thyristor. So the current passing through the current thyristor will be zero. So it will be commutated or it will be turned off. So load commutation we will discuss in the coming lectures in detail. Then the second method is the forced commutation. So the name itself as in we are forcing it to commutate. That means using some artificial technique, we are going to force the current to become zero and commutate. So in this type of commutation, the current through the thyristor is forced to become zero to turn it off. So this can be done in two ways. First one is the voltage commutation. So a charger capacitor momentarily reverse bias the conducting thyristor and thereby it will turn off the thyristor. This is one method. As we are applying the reverse voltage to turn off, so that's why this is called as the voltage commutation. And second technique is the current commutation. That means a current pulse is forced in the reverse direction through the conducting SCR. So this amount of the current that is forced in the reverse direction will be equal to the actual load current. So your net current through your SCR will be zero. So it will turn off. So both these conditions artificially we are doing. So detailed analysis of these things will be discussed in the coming lectures. So both the above commutation circuits employs the principle of the tank circuit. So the tank circuit basically contains an inductor, a capacitor and a unidirectional device will be there. The device can be either diode or a thyristor. So let us see what is the tank circuit now. So this is the tank circuit. Tank circuit basically contains a capacitor an inductor and one unidirectional device also will be there. Either it can be a diode or another thyristor also. So here, whenever you close the switch, so what is going to happen that we are going to see what will be the characteristic. So initially, I am assuming my capacitor is charged like this. Top side plate is plus, bottom side is minus. It is initially charged to a voltage of V0. It is initially charged to a voltage of V0. I am taking the reference direction of the voltage as voltage across the capacitor. I am taking like this plus minus Vc and this is my Vl. That means when you apply the KVL in this loop, we will get it as VL plus VC is equal to zero. We can apply the KVL like this. What is VL? VL is L into DI by DT and VC I can calculate as one by C into integration of IDT. 1 by C into integration of IDT plus L into DI by DT is equal to 0. As the capacitor is charged in the top side plus and bottom side minus, when the switch is closed, the current will pass in this direction. Agree with me? So now I am applying the Laplace transform. So applying the Laplace transform of this one, this will become 1 by C into integration of I of T DT will be I of S by S plus we have to take the initial value of the charge divided by S because we know charge Q is equal to, we know the charge Q is equal to CV. We know charge Q is equal to CV. So initial value of the charge will be Q naught. Initial value of the charge will be C multiplied by V naught. So here 
as the current is leaving the positive terminal when it is discharging it is actually discharging or it is acting as a source not acting as a load so that's why here we keep one minus sign this minus sign indicates as the current is leaving the positive terminal of the capacitor that means capacitor is actually discharging not charging with respect to the initial value final value will be less than this that's why we are representing by the minus sign here so i am repeating again so in, in uh, that the integration of i dt can be written as i of s by s minus q naught by s. What is the q naught? So the q naught is equal to c into v naught. Actually, it should be written plus sign here. Minus sign is indicating that it is actually discharging. Then coming to the inductor, because inductor as the switch is open, that means the current passing through inductor is equal to zero. So initial condition of the inductor is zero. So that's why this will be l into di by dt can be represented by s into i of s minus initial value of the current. Initial value of the current is zero. So that's why this is zero is equal to zero. So this I am further simplifying it. I of s is equal to this C I am taking inside it will become 1 by C s here also I of s is there that is L into s so L into s and this term I have separated out C V naught by C into s C C will cancel it will become V naught by s is equal to 0 or otherwise I can write I of s into I am taking L by s outside I am taking L by s outside because I want this in the form of s plus something or s square plus something in that form so when you are taking L by s outside this will be L by s so this will become s square and first term will become 1 by L c and this v naught by s i am taking second side it will become v naught by s so ss will cancel in both the sides so i can write i of s is equal to v naught divided by v naught divided by l into s square plus 1 by l c so here i am taking this 1 by l c as omega naught square or i am taking 1 by root l c as omega naught which is the natural frequency of oscillations so that we are going to see later on after derivation so i can write i of s is equal to v naught by v naught by l into s square plus omega naught square so i am multiplying and dividing with omega naught on numerator and denominator then separating the terms this will become v naught by omega naught l into omega naught by s square plus omega naught square so now when i take the inverse laplace transform of this one this first term is a constant so inverse laplace transform of omega naught by s square plus omega naught square this will become sine omega naught t where omega naught is 1 by root lc and this v naught by l this omega naught is 1 by root lc when you substitute this will become v naught into square root of c by l into sin omega naught t so then i can calculate the value of vc voltage across the capacitor will be we know that it is 1 by c into integration of i dt and initial value we have to add the initial value initial value is minus v naught that way it is minus v naught so when you substitute that value it will become 1 by c into integration from 0 to t so i of t is v naught by omega naught l into sin omega naught t dt so when you are doing the integration these terms are constant only this term is depending on the time so integration of sin omega naught t is minus cos omega naught t by omega omega naught so you can see 1 by omega naught into minus cos omega naught t integration we are doing from 0 to t minus v naught so when you are doing this substituting this at t substituting with t and then substituting 0 so this will become v naught by omega naught into lc into as the minus sign is there so this will become 1 minus cos omega naught t minus v naught so this value we got so this we know that omega naught omega naught is nothing but 1 by root lc omega naught is nothing but 1 by root lc this is actually omega naught into omega naught right so this will become omega naught square so omega naught square becomes 1 by lc 1 by lc lc will cancel out this will become v naught so this is v naught into 1 minus cos omega naught t minus v naught so this v naught v naught will cancel out only this middle term will be remaining that is minus v naught into cos omega naught t you can see voltage across the capacitor is following the cosine wave and there is a negative sign so then coming to the inductor voltage across the inductor will be l into di by dt plus initial value is equal to zero so this will become l into d by dt of so substituting the value of i of t that is v naught by omega naught l into sin omega naught t so this is d by dt of sin omega t is omega into cos omega t so this is omega naught into cos omega naught t that's why it came like this this omega naught omega naught will cancel ll will cancel so this will become v naught into cos omega naught t so here you can see voltage across the inductor is following the cosine wave voltage across the inductor is following the cosine wave so voltage across the capacitor i'm representing here this is voltage across the capacitor 
So I'm just summarizing the equations. We got the equation for the current as V naught into square root of C by L into sine omega naught T. What is the meaning of this? It follows a sine wave. So it is following like this with respect to omega T, it will start from the zero. When omega T is equal to zero, it will be zero. So and when omega t is equal to pi, again it will become 0 and omega t is equal to pi by 2 at this instant it will reach the peak value. That peak value is v naught into square root of c by l or otherwise we can tell that this circuit, this tank circuit will conduct for a time period of pi that means omega t is equal to pi. Omega t is equal to pi or we know the omega is 1 by root lc. When you substitute it, it will become the time period will be pi root lc. That means this will conduct for a duration of pi root lc the time period is pi root lc seconds so now coming to the voltage across the capacitor is minus v naught cos omega t it will be like this initially it will start from minus v naught and gradually it will increase it will reach the value of vc getting it so now coming to voltage across the inductor voltage across the inductor is given by v naught cos omega naught t so initially the value is plus v naught and it follows the cosine wave, it follows the cosine wave. You can see by the end of the conduction period, the voltage across the capacitor becomes reverse to the initial value. Initially it is minus V0, now it is becoming plus V0. Similarly, voltage across the inductor becomes opposite. It will become plus V0 to minus V0. So the same thing I have represented here. Current wave is sinusoidal and conducts for a duration of omega naught t is equal to pi or t is equal to pi root LC. And at the end of the conduction period, the voltage across the capacitor get reversed. So this tank circuit will be useful in analyzing the different commutation techniques which we are going to discuss in the coming lectures. I hope the concept of the commutation circuit and its requirement is clear to you. If you still have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.